What do you think? Can all of that fit in here? Let's find out. All right, everybody, welcome back. So it's a good question. Can all that gear fit in here? And that was my question because this is something that I think would be really, really handy for you motorcycle riders, scooter riders, which I will be soon once I get my scooter registered, and uh, electric bike riders. And electric bikes are really, really popular right now. Um, I am working with a company to try and get to review some of them, so do stay tuned. Uh, I think they're an excellent choice for a prepper as long as the range is there and the speed is there. If they only go 15 miles an hour or 10 miles, they're not really all that great. And trust me, I had one that did just that many, many, many years ago. Um, it was a Zap electric bike, and it was some kind of weird motor that connected to the back wheel. And Anyway, it never really did what I wanted it to do. But it did work, but it needed constant charging. I ended up selling it to a gentleman who uh, was partially blind, couldn't get a driver's license because of it. And he rolled that thing everywhere, and he upgraded the heck out of it. But regardless, the modern electric bikes of today, and I see a lot of them around, are a lot faster. Now, why would I say you want this for a two-wheeled vehicle or even a four-wheeled vehicle? Because this turns into a backpack. This is the Survival Frog Pocket Backpack. Um, something I always thought about when I used to store my stuff in my vehicle in a big uh, container, you know, a big plastic container, which I now use for a planter on the other side of this wall to grow beans in. Um, I thought, okay, great. I'm stuck on the side of the road. Uh, car's not going to run anymore. i got to get to my feet and start walking. What am I going to do with all this emergency gear? And I finally got smart enough to put a full-size backpack in there. Empty, but still it was bulky as heck, took up a ton of room, and for something that I may never use. So, I think something like this would be really, really handy for two- and four-wheel vehicles as a backup backpack. Not all of us, like I have, have our stuff in backpacks in the back of our vehicles. A lot of times it might be in a couple of plastic bags, it could be in a storage tote, it could be in a um, duffel bag, a gym bag, whatever. And if you have to hit the road because your car is out, it's done, you know, you have to start walking, you got to carry your emergency gear with you. So what I have over here is just the stuff that I have under the seat of my scooter. Now I know you're going to think, oh my god, this scooter must weigh like 9 tons. It's really not that much stuff and it's all super lightweight. Like my titanium cook kit and stove, ultralight tarp, you know, stuff like that. It's all super, super lightweight. And you've seen me review this stuff. So I think something like this would be really handy if I had to ever hit the road and start walking back from wherever I am. Also, too, especially for the bike riders and the scooter riders, you go shopping. And you don't necessarily have a good storage uh, location on your scooter. Well, you can load this up. Maybe you bought too much. You can load this up and take it with you. Now, this is a roomy 30-liter backpack. It folds up nice and small, easily zips into your front pocket. It's compact, easy storage, weighs 9 ounces, so it's really not going to weigh you down at all. And we are going to try and put all this stuff in here when I open it up. Uh, it's awesome for traveler shopping, like I said. It's designed with tear-resistant nylon. It can withstand rain, um, but not like torrential rainstorm, a moderate rainstorm. It is rain-resistant for that. They didn't give me a rating. They just said moderate rainstorm. So that's what I'm going to go with. It has really heavy-duty zippers, keeps everything secure, and it's perfect for camping, hiking, or emergency uses. Now, would I use this as my primary bug-out bag? Of course not. I want something thick, heavy, and durable. This is pretty thick, heavy, and durable, but it's better suited for emergency use and not long-term, you know, two or three years with heavy stuff hanging in my, in my closet-type use. So... Let's take a look at it. It has SBS metal zippers on the side. Okay, let's open it up and show you what we got. Now, I have not opened this up yet, so I really don't know if that's going to fit, but I figure 30 liters should do it, right? I hope, or I'm going to look really silly. Okay, so there you go. Now, as you can tell, you're going to need to put these straps on. You can adjust them for however you want. Fairly simple. You're just going to feed them through the back, feed them through the front, and that's it. You're done. So, being that we're not going to wear this today, we're really doing a fitment test. I'm not too worried about that. But, as you can tell, that's a pretty decent sized backpack. And it is thick, too, if you stretch it out a little bit here. You even have a side for a water bottle, which is cool, because I happen to have one in my scooter that I keep in there. So, let's start loading stuff up and see 
if we can fit it all in. All here. right, I'm not packing this correctly. I'm not going to pack the you know light stuff, heavy stuff on top. Like I'm just going to pack it. I'm on the side of the road. My scooter's broke down. Maybe I've been in an accident. I got to start walking home. There's an emergency, whatever. So I'm not going to think about packing this, you know, correct backpacking manner. So yes, I know things are supposed to go in certain places in your backpack. First thing we're going to do is the tarp on the bottom fits right in there. And behind that, I'm going to do. I want some. I want a good solid base. My first, my cook kit, and I'm going to put my little stove. I have a, the Vargo wood stove in there. Uh, my, eh, I might do the first aid kit. That I will leave on top. Something just bothers me about putting the first aid kit all the way at the bottom of your backpack. Okay, this is my water filter, by the way. Sorry, the MSR micro filter. I am going to take my knife and utensils and my ferro rod, some tinder, and coffee. Strange combination, tinder and coffee. <laughs> okay. This is more fire starting type stuff. My tinder is in here. I have uh, some dryer lint in that little stuff sack. This little guy here, this is a fat rope. Um, knife sharpener, matches of course, and some fat wood. Okay. Got some hydration multipliers. These things are very, very good. If you're dehydrated, these things are awesome. I do want to put my fuel in here. I am going to put it separately. So it doesn't ruin the food. Put it in the back section here. Okay. And we're going to stick this in here. I keep picking up that first aid kit going, no, no, no. <laughs> I still want to put it in there. There we go. And there we go. And now I will put my first aid kit on top. You really do want that on top. Um, if you hurt yourself, that is one thing that I just have trouble one rule I have trouble breaking when it comes to packing. So I've got this nice big bag here. I still have tons of room up top. I have room for a water bottle. I have room for maps or whatever I could put up here. Uh, I could stick a, gosh, do I have a water bottle? Yes, I do. Yay. I could stick a water bottle down the side there. And I'm pretty well set. I could really move. Let me move you back a little bit so you can see it. I'm pretty well set there. I could uh, take a hike out wherever I need to go, get out of Dodge, and uh, be pretty well set up. I do have the straps on the side here. You will have to feed those through and set them up. Compression straps if you want to compress the sides down a little bit. Um, that's interesting. I don't have the other side of compression strap there. Looks like somebody who's, uh, forgot to sew it in. <laughs> See, I have this one here, and I don't have one on this side. I mean, no big deal. Not the end of the world, but looks like it was a little mistake when they made it. But all in all, I love the bag, and I like the idea of having a rapid... Rapid deployment kind of bug out bag that you can grab and take with you should you have to abandon your vehicle, scooter, bicycle, whatever. It's also really handy for a work type situation. Um, if you work in an office and let's say, you know, you really don't want to bring in every survival tool, you know, because let's face it, most of us, when something bad goes down, we're going to be at work. And you don't want to come in with your, you know, your tactical Molly backpack, you know, with your bandoliers across your chest. Oh, just stuff it into my locker, boss. No big deal. So something like this allows you to have a backpack that you can grab your gear, throw it in, and run out of work and get home. Maybe it gives you enough time to gather all that gear once you've got it in place and get out of Dodge. So I really like it. It's not expensive. They're $29.97, so 30 bucks for the peace of mind it provides. I will be sticking it in the uh, in the scooter. Um, like I told you, I really want to start reviewing some electric bikes because I think for preppers, you put a solar panel on that thing, or you know, a smaller, thinner solar panel on that thing, and you got yourself a pretty awesome prep vehicle. And it's quiet, stealthy, and now with the fat tire ones with all the gears, you can take them off road just like an off road bike. If you guys have ever seen a channel, uh, gosh, what's his name, Mix Flip? He used to live in Vegas. Now he lives in Reno. Um, he has done some Overland reviews, but he's also done some reviews on some of these new e-bikes, and they are impressive. I mean, like, you know, burning out the rear tires type impressive. So they've come a long way, and I think something like this in, you know, whatever you transport, if you live in a big city, you know, and you can't carry a ton of stuff with you, but you got some supplies at work that you have to bring in a little bit at a time in your desk drawer, when something bad happens, you don't want to be carrying that brown bag down the street. You just toss it all in there and run. You're good to go. It is a nice bright color. Um, a lot of people think survivalists always want to hide. Well, maybe sometimes you want to get rescued. If I'm walking down the side of the road in a normal situation, you know, where my car caught on fire, whatever, I had to abandon it, 
I want to be seen, especially at night with this reflective patch. If I don't want to be seen, I can just take my pocket knife, cut that off, throw some mud and dirt all over this thing, and no one's going to see me. But definitely a cool little item. I do like it. Again, I wouldn't use it as a full-time bug-out bag because it's not made for that. It's made for a smaller kind of carry type situation. But I love the fact that it's compact. And it's also, like I said, great if you're shopping and you end up buying a little too much stuff and you have limited room when you're getting home on your two-wheeled vehicle, that's the way to go. Anyway, folks, like I said, the folded size on this is 8 inches by 9 inches by 1.7 thick. Unfolded, 19 inches by 10.5 inches wide. Backpack capacity is 30 liters. The weight is 9.07 ounces. Your material is water-resistant nylon. And your zippers are heavy-duty two-way SBS metal zippers. Very impressive little system. Anyway, folks, that's the video for today. I will put a link down below where you can pick this up. It's on Survival Frog site. Uh, again, I want to thank the person who sent this to me for review. Um, it's just a, a viewer that sent it to me. thought I'd like it, and I absolutely love the thing. I think it's really cool. So I want to thank them, and I'm not making any money off the deal, so you might as well go to the link and check it out and buy one for yourself and <laughs> see if you like it. You know, this is really just a review I did because I thought the product was really good. Um, they sent it to me, said, hey, you're going to like this thing, and I'm like, mm, let's see what it is. Sure enough, I did, and I have a use for it. Anyway, folks, don't forget our links down below. We have our Amazon affiliate store. If you're interested in any of the products I review, especially the stoves and power banks, check them out there. Don't forget our freeze-dried wholesalers link. You saw our video yesterday. We made some awesome desserts. There's a lot more there, and he has food in stock. You want to start ordering now. That's freeze-dried wholesalers. My link will be down below. You'll save 15% just for clicking the link and going there. The prices are automatically discounted the minute you click that link. And, of course, there's my Patriot Supply down below. My personal site with my personal deals on there. That's preparewithiridium.com. Preparewithiridium.com. We have a three-month emergency food supply up there. And when you've seen the prices of three-month supplies, you know they're super expensive. You can save 100 bucks on this, and the total on it is even lower than normal. It's $7.97 for three months' worth of food in buckets. Can't beat it. Uh, don't forget our Thrive Life Freeze-Dried store as well. We have food for sale there. Um, they are low on a few things, but they're still doing okay. Uh, this time they came loaded for bear. Um, they learned their lesson from last time, and uh, they're loaded up now. They have more freeze-dry locations, more employees, so they're ready to go too. So don't forget to uh, check out all the links. I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.